The placenta is hemochorionic. The blood of the mother enters the intravillous space and flows slowly around the villi, allowing an exchange of metabolic and gaseous products with fetal blood. It has two parts. The villus chorion, the fetal part, is smooth with the insertion of the umbilical cord and outlines of the umbilical vessels can be seen through the amnion and the decida bacillus, the maternal part, which is divided into irregular convex areas. Coitalodons are separated by the placenta septa. The placenta functions to have nutrient and gas exchange between the maternal and fetal sides. It does metabolism. Particularly during early pregnancy, it synthesizes glycogen, cholesterol, and fatty acids, which all serve as a source of nutrients and energy for the embryo. Transport of gases and nutrients is bidirectional. It goes between the placenta and the maternal blood and vice versa. Gases, nutrients, hormones, electrolytes, antibodies, and waste, and also several drugs are transported across the placental membrane. It also has an endocrine secretion function. The placental exchange process occurs via classic transport mechanisms. In passive transport, there is no energy consumption. Simple diffusion follows concentration gradients. They diffuse from the side with higher concentration to the side with lower concentration until a balance is achieved. No energy is used in this process. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, fats, and alcohol all use simple diffusion to cross. Simplified transport is the transition from the side with higher concentration to one with lower concentration with the help of a transport molecule. This is how glucose crosses the placenta. Active transport is transport through the cellular membrane against the concentration gradient using energy. Electrolytes cross through this mechanism. Sodium, calcium, and potassium. Then there's vesicular transport, endocytosis and exocytosis. Molecules are captured by the microvilli and absorbed or repelled. This is how immunoglobulin crosses. The uterine artery branches into approximately 80 to 100 spiral arteries which open in the middle of the placenta. Blood flows through the uterine arteries into the intravillous space and passes over the villous surfaces towards the chorionic plate. Maternal blood leaves the intravillous space through the endometrial veins which are located near the periphery of the placenta. The intravillous space of a mature placenta contains about 150 milliliters of blood which is replenished three or four times a minute. Uroplacental blood flow increases from 50 milliliters per minute at 10 weeks to 500 to 600 milliliters per minute at full term. Uroplacental flow increases during gestation in three phases as a result of vasodilation. The first occurs within days or weeks of pregnancy the second occurs with the development of the intravillous spaces, and the third is during the rapid fetal growth after 30 weeks, which corresponds with the change in the uterine blood flow. Spiral arteries will be constricted in preeclampsia, which then reduces blood flow in and out. Maternal diabetes causes edema in the villus related to a decreased size of the intravilla space. Smoking and drug use decrease the size of the placental surface area which causes more avascular villi. Infection, abruption, or previa compromise the amount of surface area of the placenta. A healthy fetus can lose approximately 50% of their placental connection without us knowing about it due to their compensatory mechanisms. The placenta peaks around 36 weeks, after which there is an increase in edema, fibrosis, fibrin deposits, and avascular villi. It is dependent on maternal blood supply. Some of the fetus's blood vessels are contained in tiny hair-like projections called villi of the placenta that extend into the wall of the uterus. The mother's blood passes through the space surrounding the villi called the intravillous space. Only a thin membrane, the placental membrane, separates the mother's blood in the intravilla space from the fetus's blood in the villi.
The umbilical cord consists of two umbilical arteries which return non-oxygenated blood, fecal waste, and carbon dioxide to the placenta. The umbilical vein brings oxygenated blood and nutrients to the fetus. The fetus depends on the placenta to meet oxygen needs while organs continue formation. Oxygenated blood flows from the placenta to the fetus via the umbilical vein. After reaching the fetus, the blood flows through the inferior vena cava to the ductus venosus. Here, a small amount of blood is routed to the liver and the rest continues on to the atrium. Through the heart, the blood goes right to the right atrium and passes to the left atrium through the foramen ovale, which is a small opening in the septum of the heart, completely bypassing the non-functioning fetal lungs. Blood continues to the left ventricle and is pumped to the aorta and circulated to the upper extremities. Blood then returns to the right atrium and goes to the right ventricle to the pulmonary arteries, which allow a very small amount of blood to the lungs. The majority of the blood is shunted away from the lungs by the ductus arteriosus and goes back to the aorta, to the two umbilical arteries, and finally to the placenta. The placenta will resupply the blood with oxygen. Fetal circulation is a low-pressure system. The lungs are closed. Most oxygenated blood flows between the atria of the heart through the foramen ovale, and this oxygen-rich blood flows to the brain through the ductus arteriosus. There are three important fetal shunts to be aware of. The ductus venosus provides access for much of the highly oxygenated blood from the umbilical vein to the fetal inferior vena cava. This streams preferentially into the atrium as a consequence of the inferior vena cava central position and relationship with the foramen ovale. The foramen ovale shunts blood from the right atrium to the left atrium, skipping the lungs. More than a third of the blood takes this route. It is a valve with two flaps to prevent backflow. The ductus arteriosus pumps blood from the right ventricle through the pulmonary trunk. Most of this blood is shunted into the aortic arch through the ductus arteriosus.